Right. Hi everyone. Um, welcome to the second lesson on uh, mechanism. Right. So we're going to learn um, another uh, series of uh, mechanisms for today. Uh, let's uh, go on to the objectives for today's uh, lesson. Right. We'll be covering the following objectives for today. Uh, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to identify and name the types of gears and explain uh, simple gear ratios, transmission uh, speed. As, uh, and their effects on transmission of uh, motion. The second objective will be you should be able to describe the use of rack and pinion, another type of uh, gear, bevel gearing, uh, worm and uh, wheel gearing. Right. Uh, last but not least, uh, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to explain the function of a simple pulley system and the relationship between the speed of rotation of pulley, the diameter of pulley as well as the velocity ratio of a pulley system. Right, uh, for the type of gears, the first type of gear will be talking about the spur gear. The spur gear operates uh, on axes which are parallel. In the animation which is on my left, the grey 16 tooth uh, gear on the green axle, uh, which will be on the green axle, is driving the uh, red uh, 24 teeth uh, gear on the, uh, which is the yellow axle as well. Uh, note that the relative speeds are 3 is to 2, right? uh, which is the ratio of the number of teeth we are talking about, which is 24 is to 16. Uh, spur gears are the most common uh, type of uh, gear uh, with, a, with, a, with a wheel with the teeth. And uh, again, the spur gears do the following functions or what they can offer to change the rotational speed, change torque, as well as uh, change the direction of uh, motion. Uh, we'll go on to the gear ratio as well as what, uh, what does it mean. The gear ratio is a ratio of the number of teeth on one gear to the number of teeth on the other gear. If you remember, the spur gears always have two set of gears matched together. All right, so we are taking the uh, number of one teeth with the number of the other teeth. All right, here the gear ratio, which uh, which is uh, given the 40 teeth and 80 teeth, it will take a very simplified version will be five is to one. That is will be the gear ratio we are talking about. Right? Uh, what does it mean to have the gear ratio? It means that it takes five revolutions or the rotation of the smaller gear to get one revolution rotation of the larger gear. What is that is the meaning of the gear ratio. Gear uh, ratio, a bit more of, on that. The gear ratio tells us the change in speed and the torque which is the rotational force of the rotating axle. If it takes five turns of the eight tooth uh, gear uh, for every one turn of the 40 tooth gear which we saw, which we saw just now, that means is that the 40 tooth gear will rotate five times slower than the 8 tooth gear. But it also means that the 40 tooth gear's axle has five times the torque, which is the rotational force, as the 8 tooth gear's axle. So we are talking about both the aspect of the gear ratio in terms of speed uh, as well as in terms of the rotational force, which is the torque. Right? Uh, spur gears can also be connected, uh, not just two gears, you have more gears. We call them the compound gears. Uh, compound gears are usually found in uh, engines, uh, workshop machines and in many other mechanical devices. All right? uh, in the diagram here, you can see the gear A uh, is actually two gears attached to each other. All right? And they rotate around the same center. Same center. Okay. Right, uh, sometimes the compound gears are uh, used so, so that the final gear that is connected in that compound gear uh, in a gear train rotates at the correct speed. So we, we want to achieve a very accurate correct speed, we can actually make use of the compound gears uh, to do that. Right, more on the compound gears, this is a very good example of a gear train. Sometimes we call the compound gears a gear train. Uh, and a uh, gear train is usually made of uh, two or more gears. All right. The driver in this example is the gear A. All right. And if a motor turns a gear A in anti-clockwise direction, can you just think about it? What would be the direction does the gear B turn, and which direction does gear C turn? All right. So uh, you also can think about whether does the gear C 
revolve faster or slower than gear A. All right, you think about it and try to explain the answer uh, uh, in uh, how the rotation and um, the direction of all these gears will be turning. All right. Um, a gear A in this uh, example turns in the anti-clockwise direction. All right, and also gear C turns in the anti-clock direction. All right. So you see in the gear train there will be one gear which is in the middle which is joining the gear A and gear B, uh, gear C which is the idler gear. Idler gear is used so that the rotation of the two uh, important gears is the same. That means gear A and gear C are rotating in the same direction which is the anti-clockwise. All right. Uh, so you can also think about whether the speed of gear A and B are the same. Uh, and uh, what does the idler gear, is, what is the function of the idler gear in terms of the gear train uh, um, given in this example? So uh, just to give an overview of what this is idler gear uh, was supposed to do, the idler, gear, uh, idler gears do not change the gear ratio. All right, that's one thing. Second thing, the gear ratio would be compounded just as the same if there were no idler gears. All right. So in the end, the idler gears actually make both gears rotate in the same direction. That is the main function of the idler gear. Okay, and also to add spacing between the gears. So if you can see the idler gear actually takes up some space, so it actually give up the spacing between the two other gears which is the driver and the uh, driven gear. Okay. Uh, uh, just now one of the objective we talked about was the gear uh, ratio and we have covered that, we have gone to the velocity ratio of the gears. All right? In general, the velocity ratio of a gear train is actually the input speed over the output speed. Uh, alternatively, the uh, velocity ratio will be the number of teeth of the dri uh, driven gear over the number of teeth of the driving gear. It's a very simple way of uh, calculating both the gear ratio and the velocity ratio of gears as well. Okay. Um, so, when you see, uh, when you use gears to make something rotate faster and uh, produce uh, less stop, it is called gearing up. All right. So, you might uh, use this to protect downstream components from high torque of a motor, right? When you use uh, gears to make something rotate uh, slower and produce more torque, then it is called gearing it down, all right? These are some terms that we uh, usually use in uh, engineering, right? And also, to, you might use this uh, to lift something heavy with a small motor or crank, right? And also, sometimes you might not gear up or down. Uh, you don't have to do that, but simply use the gears to get the torque, which is the rotational force, from one point to another with no change in speed or torque as well. Right, uh, another type of gear that we are talking about will be the chain and the sprocket. Uh, I think you have uh, ride a bicycle before and you have seen a set of gears which are connected by a chain and sprocket. All right. Um, what does this help us in? As the back wheel turns, all right, the of uh, the bicycle and it, well, the bicycle actually move forwards. The gears driven by the chains are used in machinery, uh, motorcycles, uh, in car engines, and also have many other uh, applications as well. All right. Okay. Um, we are going to look at uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of a spain, uh, chain and a sprocket. The chain is made of a series of links, right, in this way, uh, with the links held together within the steel pins, all right, which are the steel pins right here. All right. This uh, arrangement makes the chain a very strong and long-lasting way, uh, gives you a higher efficiency of transmitting uh, rotational motion from one gear wheel to uh, another. A uh, chain um, also um, chain drive has uh, one main advantage over the traditional gear train that we saw much much earlier. Uh, one um, uh, only two gear wheels and a chain are needed to transmit the rotational motion over a distance. All right, just use a chain to um, uh, have that rotation over a distance. With the traditional gear train, many gears must be used to achieve that uh, in terms of the distance. All right? You can imagine how many gears do we need to attach together as a compound, a gear train, to achieve a, a, a rotation which is uh, you know, distance away. Okay, there, there are some uh, disadvantages when it comes to chain and uh, sprocket. Uh, that are subjected to a higher rate of wear and tear and a higher noise level as well. Okay. 
Um, how do we then uh, calculate the um, gear ratio when it comes to chain and sprocket? Uh, very similar again to how we calculated the gear ratio between the uh, sp uh, spur gears. All right, so you can imagine that you remove the chain and uh, you can imagine that they are uh, driven and the driver gets connected together. So when working out the gear and velocity ratio and uh, RPM, the uh, speed of the chain uh, driven gears, it must be remember that the chain is actually going to be ignored. You can just calculate with the number of teeth uh, they are connected together. Okay. Uh, we have covered uh, quite a number, uh, quite a number of things for the spur gear. We will go on to the bevel gears. All right. Uh, it's a very good example of a very simple way of connecting the two uh, bevel gears uh, on my left, right? Bevel gears operate on axes which are not parallel, okay? Which is uh, definitely different from how the spur gears are connected. Bevel gears can be made specifically uh, for axles at virtually at any angle, all right? In the animation uh, on my left, the red gear uh, is on the yellow axle and is driving the blue gear which is on the green axle, right? Uh, the axles are turning at the same speed uh, because the gears have the same uh, number of teeth, all right? Uh, 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 the pictorial view that you can see how the bevel gears are connected in some of the components mainly found in toys, all right? Uh, these 12 teeth bevel gears can only mesh with themselves. Uh, so they can uh, produce the uh, speed necessary at different axles. All right. Uh, another good example that you may have come across and have used it before, which is the hand drill, is a very old version of uh, drilling uh, that we used to do. All right. Uh, so the the hand drill, uh, the handle is of the drill is uh, turned in vertical rotation, all right, or direction. The bevel gears then change the rotation of the chuck, which is this in the horizontal rotation, all right? There's another picture here, which is uh, very clear, which is the internal components of how the bevel gears actually uh, help to rotate uh, in a two different uh, direction, whether it's a vertical rotation being changed into horizontal rotation. Okay, uh, we have covered so far the two gears, which is the spur gear and the bevel gear. We are now going on to the third, third type of uh, gear, which is the rack and pinion. So in this example, you can see that uh, this is the rack that I'm talking about, and this is the pinion, all right, which is uh, very similar to a spur gear. Okay, uh, they are composed again, uh, which I mentioned, it's composed of two gears. The pinion is a normal uh, round gear, and the rack is actually a straight or a flat gear. The rack has uh, teeth cut into it, and they mesh together or join together with the teeth of the pinion gear. Right, so you can ask yourself if the gear rotates, uh, how you would uh, describe then the movement of the rack. Okay, the pinion rotates and uh, and moves the rack in a straight line. Another uh, way of describing this is to say that the rotary motion changes to linear motion. So rotary motion uh, changing the rack uh, to have the linear motion. Okay. Uh, it's a good animation that you can see how the rack and pinion uh, gears work together. You can uh, think of the uh, rack gear is like a spur gear that has been undrawn to lie flat. Eh? Uh, it is also means that the uh, transforming rotational motion from the mating spur or a pinion gear right, to the translational motion of the rack. Uh, as the pinion uh, rotates, right, it pushes the rack gear along a the subsequent uh, teeth mesh. There is uh, no gear ratio in a traditional sense when it comes to rack and pinion, but the fewer the teeth of the driving gear, uh, the more power will be delivered to the rack. Uh, another sense that the lateral movement of the rack is proportional to the number of teeth on the pinion as well. Uh, with some examples of the uh, rack and pinion, there are very good examples here. I'm sure you have gone to the workshop to use the drilling machine and you have moved the work table up and down with the, uh, with the rotational motion. So the gears uh, behind that uh, to move the uh, work table up and down is actually you are talking about the rack and pinion gears. It's another example whereby uh, a very heavy load can be lifted from one place to another with an idea of the rack and the uh, pinion gear. Uh, on the train itself, right? Very good examples to have an idea how the rack and pinion uh, function. 
Okay. Uh, we are going to go on to another type of gear, very interesting way of uh, how this uh, gear works, actually the ratchet and power. All right. um, power is actually the this part here, and this will be the ratchet that I'm talking about. Power can slide uh, easily on one side of the ratchet tooth, but locks up against the other. All right. Therefore, the ratchet and power only allows rotation in one direction. All right. So we'll see some uh, animation on this part. Uh, you can see the man is trying to lift a bucket of water from the well and uh, when he's trying to do that, if he gets tired, he, he actually can uh, lock the uh, bucket from moving at a certain height and he, how can he be able to achieve that? He can achieve that by using the ratchet and power. All right? uh, this is because the power has fallen into the dip or between the teeth and uh, so the bucket cannot fall back into the well. Uh, so, in order to summarize what we are talking about, the ratchet mechanism are very useful devices. For example, they are used in mechanical clocks. All right? They are also very useful when uh, using a system such as the uh, to lift heavy weights. All right? So, earlier on, we have uh, also seen an example of um, uh, worm gears being in action to uh, have give you the locking system. Uh, another two examples just to show you where the ratchet and power mechanism can be used which is the fishing reel as well as uh, the handcuff so you have seen uh, policemen using the handcuff to just to uh, lock up the hands right? so this is actually the ratchet and uh, the another mechanism which is the power is actually inside these uh, handcuffs which is to lock the uh, ratchet to the uh, right uh, place itself okay. Alright, uh, the last type of gear that we're going to learn would be the worm gear. Uh, worm gear, which is this, alright, is actually can be considered as a screw, can be thought of a gear with a single tooth. Uh, because the worm uh, gear has only one tooth, the gear ratio is sim uh, simply the number of teeth on the mating gear, which is the, uh, similar to what we talked about just now, the rack and is like a spur gear as well. For example, a worm uh, gear mated with a, a four, two, 40 tooth uh, spur gear has a ratio of 40 is to 1, which is a very large ratio. All right? The worm gear acts like a gear with one tooth. This actually gives a very large gear ratio. All right? It's a very large gear ratio, something that you need to take note of when it comes to worm gear. Okay? Uh, a bit more on the worm gears. Um, uh, worm gears have much higher friction. Right, and uh, lower efficiency. Those, that is a, uh, a disadvantage of a worm gear. Uh, and uh, actually, this is one of the biggest disadvantages when it comes to comparing all the gears that we have learned so far. This is because of the face of the worm gears too is constantly sliding across the teeth of the mating gear. All right. Uh, this friction gets higher uh, if you have the more load has been on the gear system. So you can imagine that the uh, wear and tear actually happens a lot when it comes to worm gears. Okay, uh, worm gears also uh, cannot be back driven. So what does this uh, back driven means? In the animation, you see that the worm gear on the green axle is driving the uh, blue gear, right? But if you turn the red axle as an input, that means you make this as a driver, uh, what happens is the worm gear will not turn. So that is what we mean by that it cannot be back driven all right uh, it is useful for locking things all right so uh, and also uh, places like you can use it as a crank to raise and lower a lift gate for example so in that way you actually uh, use it as a locking system uh, in some of the mechanisms uh, so we have covered quite a number of things uh, mechanisms so far uh, in terms of the gears as well as the ratchet and power and chain and sprocket and so on and so far. So we have come to the last part of the mechanism which is the pulley. All right? uh, pulley is a very simple machine uh, made with a rope, <coughs> made with a rope, belt or chain wrapped around a wheel which is this we are talking about the wheel here. Uh, there may be a groove uh, in the pulley to help the belt grip or the chain or even the rope. Okay? Right, uh, pulleys are actually used to transmit uh, rotary motion mainly from one shaft to another. Uh, Loop around the pulley is a continuous rubber strap or the belt. So in this example that you can see that the both the two uh, pulley wheels are actually rotating in the same direction. 
right? So uh, whether this uh, wheel is going in a uh, um, uh, clockwise direction, so this wheel, which is the uh, driven wheel, is also going in a uh, clockwise direction. What if you want to uh, achieve uh, rotation in opposite direction? So we have this what we call a cross belt uh, pulley. Uh, so in this way, to change the direction of rotation, the belt must be crossed, all right, crossed. And to stop the belt uh, rubbing uh, excess, excessively at the uh, cross point, the pulleys are being offset because they may not be in the same uh, plane of uh, connection, so they may be offset to achieve less friction. Okay. Uh, very similar to gear system that we saw earlier, uh, there are also, we call these a compound pulleys. So compound pulleys, there should be more than two pulleys uh, connected together. All right, so in this uh, very good example, so you see the two pulleys are connected together. And uh, this, uh, 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 this uh, cartoon actually gives you a very good idea is that in order to half the effort being used to lift the same load, uh, but what you do is that instead of use, just using one pulley, you can actually have double pulleys with the compound pulley, all right? Uh, and you can actually, but one disadvantage of course is to have the, the rope being pulled further away to lift the load from uh, to a certain height, all right? That's another disadvantage of using compound pulley sometimes. Okay. Uh, pulley system may consist of another type of pulleys, all right? The pulleys are used, uh, may be fixed in one place or move as the load is being Right, so this one we consider as a simple pulley system consists of just a single pulley. All right, uh, so we have uh, many uh, pulleys connected together. We call them the compound pulley system. Right, uh, sometimes the pulleys uh, also can be stacked. All right, so in this example that you can see here, there are quite a number of uh, belts connected together, and there are pulleys are stacked up in this manner. So why do we uh, use such a stacked up pulleys to achieve? Uh, a larger torque, which is a rotational force as well. All right, so in that way, the the force needed to lift do rotation of a certain uh, load, then you can use a stacked up pulley. And also, you can see that the the pulleys are actually V shaped in this manner. Why do we have that V shaped uh, pulley? Because you want to achieve a greater friction between the pulley and the belt. So in that way, the belt will not slip away from the pulley itself. All right, so. Uh, in, in this stacked up pulley, you are trying to achieve a very large rotational force. Okay, so what if you want to achieve a different uh, speed uh, that you, you want to have? So we have uh, uh, stacked up pulleys in a cone shape. So in this way, you can imagine that by connecting a belt, which is in a larger diameter to a smaller diameter of the other driven pulley, you can achieve, achieve a, a different speed uh, uh, in, in the driven uh, pulley. So you have uh, come to workshop and work with a, dr a drilling machine. Some machines actually operate at different speeds. So how is it being achieved? Is the way that we connect the pulley in the uh, driven and the, uh, I mean the driver as well as the driven. So in that way, we can actually achieve a, a different uh, speed uh, in the driven and the driver. All right, so we come to the end of the second lesson on uh, mechanism. Uh, again, very similar to the first lesson, we have covered quite a number of uh, mechanisms so far. So mainly we focused on two types of mechanism, which is the gears as well as the pulley systems. I hope you have uh, enjoyed the lesson. We'll have a last lesson, which is going to be uh, next week. So we hope to see you again and I hope you have enjoyed the lesson so far.